what is the best value Mac in regards to performance per dollar. So I sometimes have weird ideas and the other day I wondered what the best value Mac would be strictly on a performance per dollar basis. So what I did here is look at every new Mac as well as every used Mac from the last like, five years or so and compare the Geekbench results for single core and multi-core performance as well as graphics performance in relation to their price. Now, is this a proper representation of what would be the best value Mac for your specific task? Absolutely not. Because of course, Geekbench is a synthetic benchmark that favors short bursts and therefore typically is not firmly limited. And then the different Macs also have lots of other differentiators that play no role in our comparison here, like different screen qualities, different uh, SSD sizes and different amounts of RAM. And although I compared only Macs with at least 16 gigs of RAM here, but yeah, you, you get the idea. This is not a scientific comparison at all. If you want to get a more nuanced idea of which Mac might be the best for your specific use case, I made a whole video looking into that, that link is up here or in the description down below. Having said that, I do think this performance per, per dollar comparison is fun and also gives a rough idea which Macs are the gems, so to speak, in terms of value. I like to see it as a drag race between cars. It doesn't show the full picture of the car's ability as you only go in a straight line, but we see some performance comparison and it is fun to watch, right? So let's hit the drag strip and start with MacBooks. And let's first look at the single core performance. So that matters mostly for things like browsing the web, file management, office work like Microsoft Word, for example. So normal everyday tasks, so to speak. And here the undisputed winner in terms of value is the OG MacBook Air with Apple's M1 chip. You can get these nowadays on eBay for around $470 um, with, and that is important, with 16 gigs of RAM. So that brings the single core value to 4.99 points per dollar. The runner up is the latest MacBook Air with the M4 chip, which costs 999 new and also comes with 16 gigs of RAM now as standard. Its Geekbench single core value is 3.75 points per dollar. So between the two, it is quite easy. For everyday tasks, you will not really feel a big performance difference. And the M1 is still plenty fast for today even and absolutely enough for 90% of people. However, we are obviously looking at used models here. And so their lifespan is going to be a lot more limited compared to the new M4 on the other hand, which of course also comes with warranty and, and stuff like that. So. If you can afford the $999, I would say the M4 is better value, all things considered. But purely looking at single core performance per dollar, the M1 MacBook Air is the winner here. Now, going over to multi-core, which matters for more complex tasks like you know video editing and 3D design, uh, more complex photo editing, software development, and so on, the winner per dollar is again the original M1 MacBook Air at 17.7 points of multi-core performance per dollar. The runner up here is the 14-inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip, which can be had for just under $1,000 used. And in this scenario, when looking at multi-core performance, it would definitely be my pick. And that's because for $500 more, you gain a much better cooling system, which will help performance when you know looking at more sustained loads. You get a way better display, speakers and, and everything really. And finally, looking at the graphics performance, which you would obviously need for gaming as well as 3D work and some more uh, serious video editing, the M1 Max equipped MacBook Pro 14 inch from 2021 comes out on top, giving you 85.5 points per dollar for its used price tag at around $1,300. So the runner up here is again the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro coming in at 83.6 points per dollar. The latter being a bit newer and cheaper and providing better multi-core performance as well would be my choice here, even though you lose a bit of you know raw graphic performance. So when trying to crown an overall value winner for MacBooks, I would say it is the 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook, which is the slightly better successor to my trusted um, M1 Pro MacBook Pro here, which I use every day as my main machine at this absolutely enough uh, performance for my photo and, and video work. 
Depending on use case and, and budget, the original M1 Air as well as the new M4 MacBook Air would be great alternatives as well. All right, now let's jump over to desktops and you know to have a level playing field for the uh, you know non iMac models. I added $500 to get a halfway decent 4K display as well as mouse and keyboard, so we can directly compare everything. Again, starting with single core performance, the clear winner here is the new M4 Mac Mini, coming in at just $599 and even when adding the $500 for the peripherals easily beats the runner up, which is the old M1 iMac, which can be bought on eBay used for a little bit under $800 nowadays. So, Unless you absolutely need a fully integrated design aesthetic of the iMac, in my opinion it really is a no-brainer to get the M4 Mac Mini here. As you could probably even bring my approximated cost for display and mouse and keyboard down to, I don't know, something like $300 maybe, which would make it even more appealing. Now, looking at multi-core, it is exactly the same situation, the M4 Mac Mini clearly wins again. On second place here we have the used M2 Pro Mac Mini. But looking purely at multi-core performance, it doesn't make sense at all because it's older and also has worse performance as well. It's a bit different when looking at graphics performance though. Similar to the MacBooks earlier, the number one spot here is reserved for the M1 Max Mac Studio this time from 2022. It comes in at 79.4 points per dollar, including the $500 allocation to um, peripherals again. And the runner up here is the Mac Mini M2 Pro again, which has a Geekbench medal score of roughly 75,000 points and that's bringing 67.5 points per dollar to the table. And as they are both a bit older and therefore used machines, I'd pick the M1 Max here, uh, as it also comes with double the amount of RAM as standard. Speaking of RAM, I didn't really include that into my value calculations here as it would make things way more complex and this video's purpose is really just to have this fun drag race comparison for synthetic benchmarks, right? Um, I, I did however only include models with at least 16 gigs of RAM and I think this is the minimum required for a bit more serious work. Overall, in the desktop category, I think that the new M4 Mac Mini is the undisputed value king. Only when you really rely heavily on GPU power, the M1 Max Mac Studio, um, might be a good idea as well and I'd put it in second place here. And by the way, you will find links to the new M4 Mac Mini as well as the new M4 MacBook Air in the description below. Mind that these are affiliate links, so uh, if you buy through those, I may earn a small commission. All right, and as I mentioned earlier, if you want to know which Mac is the best choice specifically for your use case, click on the video right here. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. So let's hit the drag strip and start with Mac, Mac, and start with Matt, Mac, Mac books.